We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video here on our property in central Portugal and this morning we woke up in the caravan to some freezing cold weather. Not actually freezing but the winter is definitely here. I've had to dig out my beanie, my down jacket and today is really grim. It's just going to be raining most of the day and it looks fairly heavy so there's not much we're going to be able to get on with on the land. The wood still hasn't arrived unfortunately but we're hoping it's going to be here in the next couple of days but you know us, we don't waste time so we've got an adventure planned for today so follow along to see what we get up to. So before we head off on our adventure I've just realised that all of the parasol mushrooms have finally fully opened so they're ready to pick, ready to eat, they're literally dotted around everywhere and look at the size of this one. I've got size 13 feet and that is nearly the whole size of my foot. I'm really excited about where we're going today because we can finally get some bits and pieces for the house. And I say finally as if I haven't been hoarding things for many years for when we finally move into the barn, but there's certain things that we're gonna get today that I've been waiting for for a long time. And it's more than just bits and pieces. Yeah, it's bits and pieces. It's big things, big things and pieces. <laughs> is getting nicer and nicer the closer that we get to Lisbon it's actually a beautiful sunny day here and we're not far away now probably about an hour until we get to our destination and let us know in the comments if you can guess where we're actually going I'm sure a lot of you guys already know where we're heading to and me and B are just so excited because we're buying stuff to kit out our new home. I'm really excited to be getting some new stuff for the barn today and actually talking of new things that brings me on perfectly to today's sponsor which is Amaze. So Amaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences whilst donating money to charities across the world and they're currently giving you the chance to win an epic Airstream Interstate 24X the moment me and Theo saw this Airstream, we were immediately thinking of all the places we could adventure in it. All-terrain tyres and air ride suspension make exploring off-road a dream. Solar power so you always have energy to charge electronics. Even an awning to sit below whilst having a drink in the sun. The comfort and adventure is a perfect mix in this Airstream. And better yet, by entering to win the Airstream Interstate 24X, you're also supporting the Jimmy Johnson Foundation which is dedicated to assisting children, families and communities in need across the United States. The foundation currently focuses on funding K-12 public education. So for your chance to win the Airstream Interstate 24X and support the Jimmy Johnson Foundation, just head to amaze.com forward slash indie project or click the link in our description. So let's run, run, run.
port of call is definitely going to be food because we're really hungry now. <laughs> We have just arrived at Ikea and the first thing we're going to do is get some food because we're both really hungry. It's just gone past lunchtime. Took us a little bit longer to get here than we thought it would but we're excited to get some food and then look for some products for our new home. ordered an absolute feast of a meal to power ourselves around IKEA for the next couple of hours so we got enough energy to buy the goodies that we want for our new home and I went for the broccoli the veggie balls I've got dual potato so I went for the mash the fries and then I've got a dime cake to finish and a fake coke to wash it down with So we've just been looking at this chair right here for our reading corner but B's just seen this one and it's actually so nice we really think this would go well with the stone wall and the plastered white walls it looks lovely and B doesn't look too bad on it either <laughs> it's my turn to sit down <laughs> on this chair and it's really nice actually it lounges you back and this is probably one of the most important IKEA trips of our life because the furniture if we get it right it will really make a difference furniture can make or break a room and that's essentially what we've got in our home one big room and it means that we can style it exactly the way we want so we're not going to rush this trip we're going to take our time and look at every single different chair that we like the look of so this is the area where we're thinking of having this chair and i do think that it could look quite nice there but it's just this bit's a little bit over the top and i'm really not 100 percent sure but hmm and also if you look close it's a corduroy which is also very interesting but it's a lovely nude color i do like it i want one of these they're glorious organization anyone who likes organizing would love one of these I do actually have one in the caravan but it won't fit in our new kitchen. It doesn't exist yet. <laughs> so after going backwards and forwards we finally figured out which chair we wanted to get but they don't have it in stock in any of the stores in Lisbon. There's two big IKEAs in Lisbon and none of them have it so we're gonna have to order that online but there's plenty of other things that we need to buy today like a mattress for our bed. I managed to lose B for a second and here she is lying on one of the mattresses. <laughs> she says it's actually quite comfy which is a good start because if you look around there's just tons of mattresses everywhere and it's always hard to decide which one you want to get but I think we might have found it. What do you think of this rug? Very nice. Absolutely love it. Imagine that under the mezzanine with the sofa and a beautiful chair. It's um, a little bit out of budget. A bit. I reckon this is more our budget. <laughs> Look how small it is. That's all we can afford. We have nearly completed IKEA because we have made it to the warehouse section. We just need to look for our mattress. But look at this place. It's absolutely massive in here so it's like finding a needle in a haystack but we have a trolley full of stuff and I'm not gonna lie I'm losing the world to live B still going strong so while B's looking for the mattress I'm having a great time pushing myself around on a trolley like a big kid I've definitely lost the will and I'm ready to go home
thankfully they have this in stock because I think I would cry if they didn't. So it's very heavy, but I'm going to try and get it on on my own. Go on, get it. <laughs> that was easy actually. <laughs> stuff out of the trolley and in the barn. We made it out of Ikea, happy about it, very tired, feet are sore, but we did it. I'm sure anyone who's ever been to Ikea knows what I'm saying right now. It's always an experience. lovely crisp morning today winter's definitely in the air yesterday there was even a bit of frost on the car but we had some exciting things happen during yesterday when we weren't filming so we're gonna go and show you those now someone's got a new car on <laughs> It's a beautiful day here on our property in central Portugal and we have some new additions to the land and it's such a pleasure in, what is it, still November. I was going to say December but it's still November. Yeah, we're rushing ahead of ourselves. <laughs> it's still the end of November and look at the weather. I do have to wear a, a jumper, although you're in a t-shirt. I'm, I'm in a t-shirt, yes, I'm layered. But it's very fresh this morning and we have some new additions to the property we have some gravel Doo -doo. and then if you come over here look at this <laughs> we have a load of new roof tiles so can any of you guys guess what these roof tiles are for and I'll give you a clue it's not for the garage or workshop build down here every day watering them <laughs> it blows my mind at the progress that these plants are having because they're looking like they're getting to be edible status now so my garlic is just completely living its best life and i don't come down here every day <laughs> and i'm surprised because they've literally just shot up they have like these ones here have got massive still not 100 percent sure exactly what they are fairly confident that the ones at the back are broccoli and cauliflower but not sure yet i guess once they start to produce their main vegetable section then i'll know but you know this is novice gardening for you it's a learning curve and i'm loving it absolutely loving it you're smashing it i am i am <laughs> you know what i am and Double actually, down on that. i was just saying to theo that i really want to get this one filled now and because we chopped down well we pulled out loads of broom bushes with the tractor that can all just go straight in so i think that that's going to be my next task over the coming weeks i know we're still building the house and all that kind of stuff but in my spare time i want to get this in so my seedlings can get in the ground because they're they're massive now <laughs> so i think i've been keeping this zipped at night because the nights are pretty chilly and uh, i don't want my seedlings to die off in the cold but they're absolutely loving life i've got peas in here onions uh loads of other things i've completely forgotten lettuce <laughs> kale things like that and they're just they're loving life but as you can see the peas and stuff are getting really big now so they need to go in the ground so 
that's going to be my next gardening task is definitely that and also I, I really want to do that herb thing as well but there's a lot of ideas they're all going to come in time <laughs> We got back from Ikea at, uh, I think, midnight. It was late. And then I had some editing to do, so it's a very late night. So yesterday we took it easy a little bit, but we did go and finally pick up all of our wood for the floor. It, it's not all of the wood, because we can't store enough floorboards in here for the bottom section of the floor, but we've got the uh, floorboards for the mezzanine. And down here, these are all the buttons that are going to run along the floor to allow the insulation to go in between. So we've got 25 mil cork insulation. These are 50 mil buttons. And then we're going to run 25 mil buttons in between them so that there's an air gap between the concrete floor and the insulation. And then the insulation will sit right up against the floorboard so it should be nice and toasty walking around barefoot <laughs> but today the main objective is basically to get the last two joists either side of the mezzanine so we can lay down the floor and those joists are here yeah so we need to we need to unwrap them see what condition they're in hopefully we don't have another shock horror moment of their standard line but i'm sure they're going to be okay <laughs> Did you um, show the floorboards? Yeah, so these, these are the floorboards. I think they're 2.2 centimetres thick, so nice and thick. Tongue and groove. Tongue and groove. They're pine and they look really organic, they really look natural. They lovely down there. Which is what we want. We want all the knots and the, the nice patterns in the wood. And we're going to actually just clear varnish them. But what we're going to do today on the bottom, I know we've had a lot of people asking, what are we gonna do on the bottom? Are we gonna paint them white? What are we gonna do? We're gonna use the Danish oil along the bottom. So we're gonna do a test today, see how that comes out. And then tomorrow or the next day, when it's good weather, we can take them all outside, oil all the bottoms, get them on top, and then we're gonna clear varnish the top when they're in situ. And the reason why we're going to be going with the Danish oil on the pine flooring underneath for the mezzanine is because above me, that's the same concept. The cladding is pine and the beams are chestnut and they're all with Danish oil so they look really nice. And we just thought seeing as we're going to be sitting underneath, it's kind of like another ceiling. We want to mimic that so it should look really beautiful. And I'm really excited to get them in place. So far so good. <laughs> lovely to work with wood yeah <laughs> I do really enjoy woodwork it's uh, an excuse can't wait to get my tool belt on my hammer my nails <laughs> but yeah no it's just gonna be nice getting the floor down isn't it it's been a long time coming and we waited a while for the floor and we've just ordered the flooring for down here so hopefully by the time we've done that the flooring will turn up 
four down here we can get the battens in and I've got a cool way to fix the battens down that I'll show you that I learned from my friend Nick. We haven't fastened it down yet because we're just seeing exactly where we want it because obviously if this was a perfectly flat wall you'd put the beam directly to the wall but because the wall kind of goes like that we're figuring out if we should just offset it a little bit so the curve of the wall doesn't look really weird so I'm coming down to double check before I screw it in place perfectly straight yeah either side and then the gap I see what you mean if, if the middle's touching and the others aren't it's gonna look really yeah, weird yeah but if there's a small gap it kind of you can't actually really tell unless you're staring at it and it doesn't really matter so much nicer when there's a floor to work on. <laughs> right, so we're happy with that is. Yeah, what do we do if I move it? Just need to level it. So like to bring the boards up to see how they look. Look so good, especially from underneath. So the two of the joists are in now. Yeah. All screwed in and fastened. As soon as the bottom of these uh, floorboards are Danish oiled, then we can nail them in place. They're gonna go straight up and we're gonna do the final varnish coats when they're in situ, aren't we? Exactly, and we're just trying to figure out right now how we're gonna nail them whether we're just gonna face nail them or whether some bits are gonna to have to be face nailed because obviously you're gonna have joints that budge up together that don't have a tongue on them because we're gonna to have to cut them to size. But I'm not sure whether the majority I'm gonna do like hidden nail. I think hidden and when you do it, does it go in here or no. does it go in the yeah, top? Yeah, so it goes at an angle through here and then you'll put the next board over it and you won't be able to see the nail. Yeah. And we managed to get the nails for that yesterday, so that's good. Oh, <laughs> look at Should it. Should we do a test on one of these now on, on the bottom side, do you think? Yeah, maybe run a bit of oil over one. Yeah. Leave it a day, see how it comes out on this particular wood. And then we'll take them all outside on a nice sunny day, get them done. Get them done. We've decided that actually we're not going to bother doing a little test bit because we're going to oil them with Danish oil anyway regardless because 
the ceiling has got pine and has Danish oil and looks lovely. So we're actually gonna do that tomorrow in the next video, which you will get to see. So thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're getting so close to moving into the barn. If you haven't already, please make sure you've hit subscribe and give us a thumbs up for this video. And we'd also like to say, don't forget to check out Amaze with the link in the description. See you next time.